Stefanski with you on this Thursday morning. Let's take a look at the weather. It's brought to you. Doug, why is everybody getting obese? So this article really attracted me. So I think everybody enjoyed the uh, shortwave crystal set video. Um, got a lot of response, got lots of questions. Um, one thing that came up was, uh, hey Mike, how about a TRF, or a tuned radio frequency amplifier, as opposed to an audio amplifier for a crystal set? And I thought that uh, that might be an interesting thing to explore. Um, I've got the uh, Morgan Boys' first book of radio uh, crystal, or, I'm sorry, shortwave receiver here, the one tube Regen, uh, just as an example of using an active device to amplify uh, RF and audio. Um, we're going to take um, an active device and instead of using it as an audio amplifier, we're going to use it as a radio frequency amplifier with some selectivity. Thus the TRF idea. Um, I've got the elements of radio book here and uh, just show you a, a picture of a, a typical TRF schematic from the 1930s. As you can see the the TRF stages and uh, going into a, a detector stage that could have been a regen stage or that could have been a, a diode detector or a plate detector or some other type of tube detector circuit. So in this video we will look at the uh, TRF stages uh, both a vacuum tube version and a single transistor type TRF stage. Um, I think you'll find that uh, the way that we construct this is going to be something that uh, that's interesting to you. We are going to build two identical crystal radios and the two crystal radios are the foundation for this project. We're going to convert one of the crystal, crystal sets to the TRF stage and it'll be really interesting to see how simple it is to turn a crystal radio into a TRF stage for another crystal radio. So the first thing you're going to notice on this uh, coil that I wound is that the primary side is uh, looks about normal with about 25 turns of uh, number 22 or number 24 wire but the secondary with the taps um, it's not taking up much space on the coil that's because I'm using number 28 wire instead of the uh, the normal number 24 that I would use uh, if we were to use number 24 or number 26 or or even uh, number 22 uh, the coil would all still fit, but, uh, but it would take up much more of the, uh, of the form. So we're using a little bit lighter wire. Will we take a performance hit by using the smaller wire? I don't know if it would be noticeable or not with this simple crystal radio, but uh, yeah, you'd like to use a little bit thicker wires. Maybe uh, 24 would uh, probably be a better choice. Now, just twisting the taps like that usually works just fine on, on these crystal radios, but if you want the absolute best performance, what you want to do is just take a razor blade and uh, out about, you know, little ways, just give it a little scratch, and then put your solder tip on that and add some solder. What that'll do is that'll short the turn right at the coil, and it'll preserve the cue of the coil. Um, otherwise, um, the coil goes all the way out here and back, which causes some, some issues with the cue of the coil. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but I have now shined up some areas on those uh, twisted turns. You can see that. Next thing I'm going to do is hit that with the soldering tip and just a little bit of solder to, to short those turns out right there. And now we've hit each of those with a little bit of solder. And now the ends themselves are tinned. Now I've got more taps and I've got uh, screws. We're only going to be using a couple of the taps at a time. So it's fine to leave them hanging like this. Okay, presto, we have two virtually identical crystal sets. Uh, both of them uh, are following the same basic schematic. Uh, 125 turns tapped every 25 turns and a primary coil of uh, 25 turns center tapped. And the spacing between the coils is around a quarter inch. Uh, this is a, a very basic uh, crystal set. And uh, they're both performing almost identically. 
This one has a dual capacitor, but we're only using half of the section. Uh, even so, it has a little more capacitance than this one, so it tunes a wider range. Um, I'm getting the entire broadcast band with this uh, 365 puff cap and 100 turns of the 125. And I'm actually getting all the way down to uh, about 470 kilohertz with this one. So uh, the extra capacitance is getting us below the broadcast band. But that's okay. This is just uh, a couple of variables I had available uh, for the projects. So now that we have two identical crystal sets, uh, uh, I also uh, uh, wanted to show the... Uh, the way that we would convert one into a tuned radio frequency amplifier. But let's do a little review on crystal sets here. So for this video I have two antennas uh, that are up. I have a 130 foot inverted L and the, the end of the inverted L is at uh, about 75 feet. So it's more, uh, it's more like climbing to the heavens from the, uh, the house. It starts out at about the 30-foot level and goes up to the 75-foot level. And it's a tremendous wire uh, for the AM broadcast band. The second antenna is a more... Uh, uh, it's more like what I would suggest you not use for a crystal set antenna. It's 40 feet of wire goes up about uh, 20 feet and at 20 feet it continues out so it's it's a real poor antenna for a crystal set and uh, you'll you can easily hear the difference between this 40 foot compromise antenna and the 135 foot uh, high and in the clear inverted L okay I've got a, a local station it plays oldies on the uh, large antenna. Now if we were to replace that antenna with the little 40 footer, let's just try that. Try to get this on here. Oh boy. Okay, I don't hear anything. I'm going to turn the amplifier up full. The amplifier is set to a gain of 20 again. I had it at a higher gain, but now it's back to a gain of 20. And I put it in a metal box. Okay. With the volume full blast on the amplifier, I am hearing the station with the little 40-foot compromise antenna. Now, remember the trick we had using an antenna loading coil. We're going to bring the antenna loading coil into the picture now. Antenna into the loading coil and then we're putting the loading coil in right into the input of the crystal set. Okay, so I think you you can see plainly the uh, the loading coil makes the smaller antenna <laughs> the loading coil clearly makes the smaller antenna work more effectively. It's still not as good as the 135 foot antenna, but we're back in the ball game. Yeah. So the uh, the loading coil is working well with the 40 foot antenna. There's quite a few turns on this coil. This is all number 26 wire. So we're down at around 600 kilohertz with this station and we're using almost all the coil. Uh, when we were up there at 1400 kilohertz at last station we had the ball up around here so um, that coil is almost perfect for this 40 foot antenna.
Now, if you're interested in how that loading coil works, I'll review some of the crystal set uh, videos that I put up. But we're going to move on now into the TRF uh, situation. One reason that I wanted to have the small antenna is because uh, with the TRF, it should be able to bring that small antenna in line with the type of signals that we get with the full-size antenna. This is coverage of Men Men Basketball here on AM 610 WGIR. So I, I now have the, uh, the RMS voltmeter hooked up right to the output of the crystal radio. The RMS voltmeter is responding to the, the detected audio. We're in the 10 millivolt RMS range. Okay, here's the second crystal set. We just want to make sure it's identical. It's just about identical. So I've decided I'm going to keep this one as the crystal set, and this one will become the, the TRF stage. Now up here at the top of the band, we really are having trouble with selectivity. We've got some strong stations, of course, but in general, your uh, your tune circuit's Q is not as good at the top end of the band. And uh, let's see how the TRF stage helps that also. So are you guys ready to uh, build a TRF stage? Uh, the first step is we have to select a transistor. And, you know, instead of uh, using some exotic transistors like I've done in some of my videos, we're going to make everybody happy, and we're going to use uh, a couple of transistors to try. We're going to do the 2N2222 and the 2N3904. Everybody will appreciate that I'm using very common transistors. Now, my uh, multimeter does measure the gain of the transistors, the current gain. Uh, let's see if we can get this to read. Okay, get in there. There it is. So this particular 2N3904 has a current gain, or an HFE, of 153. I measured the 2N2222, and it has a slightly higher HFE around 200. So these have plenty of gain. The question is, do they have enough gain at high frequencies, like the AM broadcast band or even the shortwave bands? So the gain of these transistors is up around 40 dB. We only need about 20 dB of gain or less in this amplifier. So there's a lot more gain available than we really need. The cutoff frequency, F sub A, it's up around 4 or 5 megahertz, so it's, it's above our frequency range, uh, roughly uh, 10 times what we need. And the transition frequency is way up at 1, 2, 300 megahertz. So these transistors are going to be very hot, and they may uh, be unstable. So we have to be careful with our circuit. The other goal is uh, simplicity. We've just uh, built two identical crystal sets, and uh, doing that really was uh, a big head start in building an RF amplifier because we've already proven our tuned circuit works at frequency. That's a really big help in any project to have the most critical part of your circuit already tested. Uh, in the interest of simplicity, I want to limit the number of parts in this particular project. We're going to limit it to one transistor, an NPN transistor, a very simple power supply consisting of two uh, one and a half volt double A's and a couple of resistors and maybe a capacitor. We haven't done the circuit yet so we don't know how many parts we're going to need but let's try to keep it down to transistor, a couple of resistors and one capacitor. I think that would be a conservative amount of parts to, uh, to complete the amplifier. So the first thing we're going to do is remove the diode uh, we have all of these taps on the coil, which are going to work very nicely to match into the transistor. The transistor's input impedance is in the order of 1 to 2K, so uh, that's going to work good with the taps. 
So uh, in place of the diode, we're going to stick a, a capacitor. Uh, it doesn't need to be a very big value. It can be anything from probably uh, 200 picofarads up to a 0 0.001 microfarad. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, circuit that we're going to use for our TRF. You might remember the original TRF radios used one, two, or three stages of tuned RF amplification to achieve selectivity and gain. With transistor circuits, it's similar. They were mostly using like a ferrite rod antenna and uh, amplifying that and going into the, uh, the output. One thing you'll notice with this circuit is that uh, both the input and the output impedances are fairly low with the uh, bipolar transistor. See how we're just using a few turns on the ferrite rod and we're tapping pretty low on the output. So that tells you that the transistor in the common emitter mode, which we're using here, has a fairly modest input and output impedance of 1 or 2K uh, most of the time. Everybody's familiar with H-biasing transistors. This is something you study in school. It's a, it's a first, first uh, analog type course you get in engineering school or in engineering tech school or in a military uh, type situation where you're learning electronics. And it's a lot of fun to H-bias circuits. Um, this is not the uh, purpose of, of this video. Um, I decided to use a little bit simpler topology to bias this uh, RF type amplifier. Think about the kinds of signals that we're trying to amplify here. Are they big audio signals that need maximum linearity, peak to peak? Are they large buffers like you'd use on oscillators so you get the maximum swing to go into a power amplifier? No, this is the front end of a radio. We're talking about signals that are microvolts in size up to maybe a few millivolts in size. So the biasing becomes a, kind of a moot point. You just want to get it on the load line somewhere where the transistor is somewhat stable. We're still talking about class A, but we're talking about class A where you only got a few hundred millivolts of swing and that's more than enough to handle the signals that, you, that you're uh, coming across. So I decided to use a real simple form of biasing called feedback biasing. Feedback biasing is cool because it guarantees that the transistor stage is always turned on. You don't have to worry about the stage being turned off. And uh, as you can see, it goes down to just two resistors. Now, I added a third resistor in the emitter, and that's how I set the gain of the stage. So you can see in, in this case, we have a 1.5K against a 330 ohms. That's only a gain of about four. And uh, if you do the log in your head on that, you find out that we're only talking about a gain of 10 or 11 dB. But that is adequate for what we're trying to do. So there's a handy way to set the gain of, uh, this, of this stage. Simply fool around with that emitter resistor and you can set the gain to pretty much whatever value you want. Thursday morning. Let's take a look at the weather. It's brought to you. Doug, why is everybody getting obese? So this article really attracted me. Journal of the Academy of Nutrition. Percent portion sizes and sodium content overall have increased over time and remain high. Yeah. Look out, don't eat too much. When you feel full, stop. 37% of adults eat fast food on a given day. That includes 45% of people between ages 29 and 39. All right, let's talk about what you need. So it is uh, daytime here, you know, in the morning around 10 a.m. So we're guaranteed to only pick up ground wave stations. Uh, 
that is stations within uh, 50 to 100 miles of the of this location. Uh, I am still using the small 40-foot antenna along with the antenna tuner. As you can see, I'm using most of the coil, so the coil is set for the lower part of the band around 5 or 600 kilohertz. This is the TRF stage, uh, which is attached to the crystal set through a twisted pair. Uh, the twisted pair uh, can be just about any reasonable length between the two units. You don't want the two units too close because the coils will couple to each other and uh, that encourages oscillation. But I have them separated by a little bit here and this should work okay. So I'm going to turn on the little amplifier and set it for about half gain. And then we'll turn on the TRS stage. Falling from the sky, bubbling up from the earth, running clear the turn of a faucet. No wonder it's hard to imagine we're facing a water crisis. But we are. So that's why the American Planning Association brings you simple ways to save water at home and in your community. You can see that the TRF stage is very selective. And it's kind of made it into a real radio. That one transistor makes a, a big difference. Let's move up the band a little bit. Protecting water as a part of growth and development can be as natural as So that's how a TRF works. You very slowly tune the TRF stage and then slowly tune the crystal set. Going a little higher in frequency, so we had to move the antenna tuner a bit. Okay, my friends, the Democrats yesterday. If you're hearing buzzing, that's the background noise. Use it to tune your antenna. Okay, there's a Boston station. It's so selective you can actually miss stations. complex, hotel, or office building, turn to the experienced commercial real estate team at East Boston Savings Bank to get you started. So it's as sensitive and selective as almost any super heterodyne. And we're talking about one transistor and one diode. But, of course, we need the 40-foot antenna and the antenna tuner to make it perform like this. Getting blessed. 
blessings that there is. You don't have to be too... I don't see one. What about a bike ride? No, I want to fish. Okay. I've never been fishing. Honey, we can do it all. How long? Anyway, you can see we've moved right up the band. Picked up probably every ground wave station that's within range. And it's done it very stably. So that's a demonstration of uh, what a single TRF stage can do in a medium wave receiving setup. So this is the uh, 610 station, which is a local station. And I'm using the longer antenna. Um, on it, and you'll notice that the antenna tuner doesn't need to have as much loading with the longer antenna. So this is the amount of coil needed to resonate the 125 foot antenna to uh, 610 kilohertz. Remember when we had the 40 foot antenna we had to have the ball almost all the way over. We needed much more inductance to resonate the smaller antenna. Also the, the station is much stronger. So we're getting a lot more pickup with the larger antennas expected. So we've learned a lot about TRF. We've learned that uh, it's much more effective to have a tuned RF stage ahead of a crystal set than it is to add amplification on the other side of the crystal set.